Now, um, let us look to Byzantine columns. In a Byzantine fault process model, a faulty process may either crash or behave in an arbitrary way. It may be an adversary that wants to corrupt the service. It could be a malicious node, or it could just be silent. So, in a Byzantine quorum, a Byzantine quorum itself, the definition is, it is a set of more than n plus f divided by two processes, where f are the faulty processes, and n is the number of processes in the system. So, for example, if we have n equals 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here, we see, and f equal 2, then what do we have? What is the quorum size? It is 7 plus 2 divided by 2 plus 1, which is equal to 9 divided by 2, take the floor, plus 1, which gave us 4 plus 1, which is 5. So here's an example. You can see it here. There are five nodes in a quorum. Two are faulty, and three are correct processes. Now, Byzantine quorum have a number of properties. And this, we can contrast this problem, uh, these properties to the properties of uh, a normal quorum, a crash fault quorum. So there exists at least one Byzantine quorum with only correct processes. With normal quorums, we have also this property. So, if you look to this picture, we have here a quorum with only correct processes. There exist. And the second property is that two Byzantine quorums intersect in at least one correct process. They intersect in at least one correct process. So you can see the quorum that we just drew before, this one and this one, they intersect in at least one process. We will see that this property can be derived. Um, and then a majority in a Byzantine quorum has to be correct. So in this quorum we have three out so correct and two faulty. Um, again, these two properties, the last two properties can be derived. This one is essential because an algorithm will contact a quorum and therefore at least contact a number of nodes that is in a quorum but if the faulty nodes are silent, he has to be able to contact the rest, so the rest have to form a core. Good. We are going to use this notation when we are talking about uh, Byzantine quorum. Hash Q would be the number of nodes in a Byzantine quorum. Hash C would be the number of correct nodes. And hash CQ is the number of correct nodes in a quorum Q. So now let us look to this property, the property that two Byzantine quorums intersect in at least one correct process. And let us see if we can derive this property. We do it as follows. The number of correct processes in the system is n minus f. The number of nodes or processes in a quorum we know that it is greater than, sorry, it is greater than n plus f divided by 2. Okay. So this is the number of processes in a quorum. Now, now, so what is the number of correct processes in a quorum then? It should be greater than the number of processes in a quorum minus the maximum number of faulty processes. Now, n plus f divided by 2 minus 2f 
is equal to n minus f divided by 2. Therefore, the number of correct processes in a quorum Q must be greater than this number, which is n minus f divided by. But there is only n minus f correct processes in the whole system. Okay. Given this, then the number of correct processes in a quorum, say quorum 1, is greater than n minus f divided by 2. The number of correct processes in another quorum, quorum 2, is greater than n minus f divided by 2. If we sum these together, we get the number of correct processes in these two quorums is greater than the number of correct processes, which is this CQ1 plus Q1 and Q2. This is greater than N minus F, but there is only N minus F correct processes in the system. Therefore, CQ1 and CQ2 intersect. Intersect in one correct process. In one, at least one correct process. So, again, this is, I should be clear, if we have a system with nine correct processes, and, and we have two sets here, this set has five of these correct processes, this is Q1, and this set has another five of correct processes, then the sum of these is ten, but we have only nine correct processes, therefore they must, Q1 and Q2 must intersect. Now, so we know now that two Byzantine quorum intersected at least one correct process. Now let us look to uh, Byzantine quorums again and find the relationship between N and F. What is F? We didn't have any, we don't know yet, what is the upper bound? How many faulty processes we can afford in a Byzantine uh, system? So we are going to exploit this property. The property says there is at least one Byzantine quorum with only correct processes. You see, any algorithm using Byzantine quorum has to be able to connect to one quorum. And if the Byzantine processes are silent, there should be at least one quorum with only correct processes. Let's now look to the relationship between um, N and F. Again, the number of correct processes in the system is N minus F. So there is a quorum Q1, say, with correct processes. That is what is, this property is saying. Therefore, the number of correct processes in Q1 is greater than n plus f divided by 2. We know that the number of correct processes in the whole system has to be greater or equal the number of correct processes in this quorum, which has to be greater than n plus f divided by 2. That's what we have just shown. And what is the number of correct processes? That is n minus f, so n minus f has to be greater than n plus f divided by 2, which means if we take the 2 to the other side, means that 2n minus 2 faulty processes has to be, 2f has to be greater than n plus f, which says if we take the n to this side and the f's to this side, that n has to be greater than 3f, or f is less than n divided by 3. Let us look to this situation. We have f is 2 and n is 7, and we f 
which is 2 should be less than n which is 7 divided by 3 which is equal what 2 and 3rd right 1 third yeah, that's so f is, is less than n divided by 3 good so now let us look to one more property which is also a derived property and this is property say that uh, majority in a Byzantine quorum has to be correct processes we know that the number of processes is n it is greater than the number of faulty processes in the system and the number of processes in a in a quorum in a quorum is greater than n plus f divided by 2 which we know now that n is greater than 3 f therefore this is strictly greater than 3 f plus f divided by 2 we replaced here n by 3f which is 2f so what is this is saying is saying that the number of nodes in a quorum has to be greater than double the number of faulty processes and what are the other processes that are not faulty these are correct one therefore the number of correct processes are greater than the number of faulty processes so a majority in a Byzantine quorum have to be correct processes.